then what happened was at that time, I had some experiences with these star people. They came and they started talking to me. They took me outside and they started talking to me and they were talking a language, a telepathic <coughs> language, and I could understand everything that they were saying. And this is what we need to realize when we're working with star people, telepathy, okay? Telepathy. Don't try to make a whole bunch of words with them, because you're not going to understand the words that they speak. So they have this the original language that we all need to know, telepathy, the light language. The light language. And, and if you need to learn that, if you don't know that, we all have that, but we haven't been activated with that. I have a grandma that's really good at helping me. Okay? So if you're serious about this stuff, this is real, real good stuff. The, the light uh, spirit voice is very beautiful, especially the telepathic voice. And you know the difference. You know the difference. So the star people, they introduce themselves through a code of symbols. A code of symbols. Now these symbols, they were just on the History Channel. Did some of you see them? Yes. Yeah. They were, we threw them on the History They come down and they, um, I told them, you know, point blank, I said, I, I don't, because they call that series alien, uh, ancient aliens. Uh, I told them, I said, I do not want to talk to anybody that calls the star people aliens. I don't have time for that. You know, that sets up a, a separation, especially that word. Now, we didn't grow up that way. We didn't grow up with the word UFO or extraterrestrial or EVE or extraterrestrial biological agent, alien. We didn't have those words. They didn't exist in our language. That came from the government. So we had spiritual terms for the star people. Call them the chakra. It's a very reverent uh, uh, term that lets you know that we're family, we're brothers and we're sisters.
So I work with the 1111 frequencies, the 1212 and the 1313, and uh, uh, the spirits gave me that, and I didn't understand it way back when. They told me I had the ways of the symbols. So when the star people gifted them to the Galactic Federation with the, with the diplomats of the sacred Orionis, then I had to start that walk of trying to figure out what, what each symbol meant. Now each symbol is carries so much, like it goes back to 52,000 years when it was first presented to humanity. And, and another 26,000 years, and on June 12th of 1996, they were reintroduced to, to this mother, mother Earth again. Now, a symbol, symbols are powerful. If you take just a symbol like this, a straight line, put two little legs, what does that mean? Now, if you circle it, what does that mean? Peace. That was the symbol of what? The 60s, right? Now, just that little symbol tells the story, the, the hardships, the love, the turmoil, the chaos, the war. It tells the story of millions and millions and millions of people, billions of people. They each have a story that goes with that little symbol. That's how powerful symbols are. Each one of you have symbols. It's called a name. And you got to see it as you, as a very powerful human being. Now, the symbols. The Spirit told us just the one symbol. The first symbol they gave us was the universal law of free will. They said it takes two moons, two moons, to understand the law. Where the law carries messages and guardians from the earth nations and that of the stars and that of the Senate Mastery realms. The second one was the spiritual uh, freedom of humanity or of man. The third was called the universal law of change. Fourth, the universal law, spiritual growth of humanity. Then there was the universal law of movement and balance and the spiritual strength, health, and happiness. The universal law of innocence, truth, and family and the spiritual protection of family. The universal law of symmetry and the spiritual law of equality. There was the universal law of life, spiritual law of choice. The universal law of light sound and vibration and the spiritual law of intuition. The universal law of judgment, the spiritual law of karma. The universal law of nature, the spiritual protection of man or humanity. The universal law of love, the spiritual laws of healing. The universal law of perception and the spiritual law of future sight or prophecy. Now the universal laws are feminine laws and also the spiritual laws are masculine laws. Now within these laws come these 22 66 masters that brought in the energy, the essence, the spirit and the guidance of each law through the remembrance within your DNA. Now, when Metatron come, 
Metatron came and he combined and re reintroduced these laws in another way that helps us that reintroduce what they call the 13 moon cycle. Also, with the Ixtomi ways, with the 12-12, which they stated, a keen eye will correct astrology. A keen eye will correct astrology. Now, why did the spirits write that? A keen eye. Okay, I got keen eyes. Where's my glasses? <laughs> why do they want us to correct astrology? Simply because there's one constellation that's omitted. There's 13 in the zodiac. Not 12. 13. So I challenged most of the astrologers and said, prove me wrong. There's 13 constellations. 13th Ophiuchus, the lost tribe. And nobody said anything. So we are slowly getting back to that idea that 13 is okay. 13 moon cycle. A beautiful, accurate record of attitude and bad attitude. <laughs> and in a beautiful way of looking at life at another angle. 13 constellational systems, the astrological signs, and you are not going to be who you think you are when you go through that. Scorpio is only seven days. Virgo, the most 45 days. So we get to do the challenging, do the challenging ways to the system. And the system hasn't corrected us at all hasn't even tried, because in fact, the NASA came on our side and said, yes, this is true. NASA also asked us to pray for them. Could you pray for our satellites so the meteorites don't hit them? <laughs> I should have said that, you know, that's true though. <laughs> People. Uh, I want to say thank you. You could sit down if you want to, unless you're going to stand there all day. <laughs> yeah. So at this time, I want to say good afternoon. And we did a little bit of sweat lodge yesterday morning, and the spirit of Grandma Chandra came in, and she gave us a little bit of a uh, message to the women that, you know, not for them to worry about anything, or how they're going to talk, what they're going to say, she'll help them. And also with the men folk that they're, through the elk people, that they're, they're going to open up the men's hearts. The hearts need to be open. So is there a sound on there? Is there a sound? Okay. Did everybody look at this video? So there's a big difference in the ways of the heart and mind. The ways of beauty. The ways of spirit song, spirit dance and the ways of the mind and how things are in your life and what it does to your body. There's sweet songs uh, that we hear, especially out amongst the world, minus test technology. So. This is what you're going through every day. This is what 
they're feeling, seeing, experiencing all of this. You love that? You love that in song? That's your life. That's just a small part of your life. It's not really a big important part of your life, but it's part of your life that you decided to experience. So there's it takes a lot to stay in focus when there's the alignments are not intact with your system. Right? Feel the difference? Okay. Now, from this, this is what you need to listen to. You need to listen to. You feel that? You feel the chill go through your body? That's a realignment. And we need to have that realignment with, the, with nature. We need to realign ourselves with creation. We need to realign ourselves with ourselves. Now, many, many people that come to work with ceremony and work with themselves, the Spirit has asked us to remind them to get on the ground. When you come from the cities and the towns and when you go out in nature, Spend seven days on the ground, right, as soon as possible. You probably like to call that camping. <laughs> Get on the ground. Realign yourself with Mother Earth. Realign yourself with the greatest gift known to man that Mother Earth carries, and that's love. The trueness of love, the unconditionalness of that energy. It flows through, through us every day. Now, many of the energies that actually stop this energy are man-made energies that stop the energy that we need to balance ourselves as men, to balance ourselves in a feminine way. So one of our relatives has asked us to, for the men to stop wearing plastic shoes. Stop wearing plastic shoes. There's reasons for that, and we'll go into that on another level. So we listen. Now, many times, in many ways, languages are very important. And many of the ways, languages that we have upon Mother Earth is what you see on the screen. Many of you go to sacred sites all over the country, all over the world, and go pray. And there's many things that you see that you are familiar with, but you can't grasp why you're there. What do these mean? And you need to know that you're a big part of what you're seeing here. We have elders such as our Zuni grandpa here that has information that will help you to get started. We have grandmother Chandra that will help you to get started with information from the stone people. So activation of the language of the stones is very important and you got to know the songs necessary to create that activation within yourself first. And the first thing that you have to do is get into your silence. Silence is a very beautiful language. It's the first language we, we have. One of our elders says the reason why we speak is because we're afraid to listen to ourselves. That's what we sound like.
So this sound is carried over to this little piece of creation here, beautiful creation called the drum. And we try our best to use that sound here in our song so we realign ourselves and re help us to remember where we need to stay. And that's right here. This is your greatest teacher. Your greatest teacher is you. Everything that you need is right here. Stop externalizing. You have, you're carrying everything that the universe has to offer. You go look for it outside of yourself, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. You might even end up getting married. <laughs> yeah, and getting a divorce too. <laughs> so we need to listen to this, and your, your, this, this heartbeat never lies. It never lies, never. The mind does. The mind doesn't have a clue as to what the heart is telling you. The mind creates the second guess. The heart is about, you just know. There's no words for knowing. But the heart is unknowing. The heart is unknowing. The mind is unknowing. So we need to look at ourselves from within. And when you do this, you create a very beautiful belief system. The belief. You don't have to believe in God. You don't have to believe in the devil. You don't have to believe in anything. You just have to believe in yourself. And when you believe in yourself, you become an atheist. Honest to God. So we need about six billion religions, six billion knowings that respect each other and honor each other's heart. So when you get into these ways of heart, you're gonna understand everything that is being shown to you on this, these walls here, all across this world the oldest piece of art that our ancestors have given to us to remind us. And some of you here, maybe all of you, are the artists. You feel these, right? Yes, you do. There's no way you can't when you're, when you're in your heart. If you're in your mind, you're gonna question them. So it's important when we do this work that the heart becomes our leader. The heart becomes our God. The heart becomes our goddess. The heart becomes everything that we are afraid of. So the heart is a very important, the most important part of your walk on Mother Earth. Because that heartbeat reminds you of the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Over these years of Pisces, we're taught to pray this way to God Almighty. Always look up. All your answers are from here. Everybody's forgetting what's under your feet. She's the provider of everything that goes in your body. and out of your body. So get back to the ways of Mother Earth. The women 
are standing up and reminding you how important it is to get back into your divineness, especially the men folk. And they're pushing you. They're pushing you. You don't like to do it because you're just on the edge of being uh, out of the Piscean age and going into the Aquarian age. The Aquarian age is highly feminine. It carries a high vibration of feminine energies and there's no, no other way that the men could do but support their women. Stand with their women folk because they've stood with the men folk for the last 2,000 years. So you're going to fight them in, on one level because you, you don't want to give up your power, which you never re ever really had. So we need to honor this. All the teachers, all the masters are reminding us to get ready. If you don't get in your heart and try to stay outside of yourself, you're going to get a little sick, maybe even have a heart attack and take yourself out. And as you know, the women, they live longer than men. Because they know how to do one thing that most men are afraid to do. And they could do it really fast. They like, they're, they're good at crying, shedding a tear. That's a ceremony, shedding tears. That's one of our first, one of our ceremonies, crying, humbadetsha. Cry for a vision, cry for a dream. You make tears. I don't see, I, at our ceremony, I see all of the men, they cry. And, and it, because they're, they're in their heart. They're very much in their heart. I see, they could cry any, by any time, these sun dancers, the spiritual men. When we first started these star knowledge conferences, I couldn't get up here and talk to you without crying. I would start crying. And that's how the spirit would doctor me and remind me to get into your heart. Now, I have a friend, and he was the one that opened me up, him and his mother. And he was on this land, on this earth for 12,000 years before he decided and before he even remembered why he was here. But during that time, he created an evolution that helped us to be who we are today. And he had 12,000 different names. So we know him as Emmanuel. So he's here. When he came to me, he said, remember me. Remember my suffering. Remember. And he shot through me all the emotions that every human being carries. He had those. And he showed me how intense those emotions were 2,000 years ago. Today, we're very numb, our emotional systems. Because we carry a lot of judgment. We don't carry much unconditional, we carry a lot of conditional love. But we're trained to do that because to protect ourselves. But from what? So your heart is the greatest protector. If you open, keep your heart open, everything flows through. If you shut your heart, shut it down, close it, Everything will stop. You'll get sick. And you blame somebody for closing up your heart. Oh, that dang Mary, she made me so mad, I shut my heart down. Nobody could shut your heart. Nobody could close your heart but you. Don't blame nobody. It's, don't do that. It's, it's an illusion. So that's all right, Mary. We're all right. So keep your heart open. It's your greatest defense. It's your greatest protection that you could ever have for yourself. When you close your heart, you're going to get judgmental. 
very judgmental. You're going to get critical. You're going to get discriminate. You're going to get prejudicial. You even carry, might carry some ang a lot of anger and hate to the max where it's not necessary. You'll get sick. We all know the story. So stay in your heart. My mother would talk at times. When she talked, she would cry. She would talk about, sometimes she'll talk about her butterfly. And she'll just start, tears would come down from her eyes. So she would talk about her grandma, grandpa, or my ancestors. She would cry while she talked to us. So the heart is a very beautiful healer. It's our greatest doctor, our greatest nurse. It has the best Reiki healing energies that we could use with inside ourselves. Yo, Mashia, hey, Mishishi. Yo, Mashia, hey, Mishishi. Yo, Mashia, hey, Mishishi. Yo, Shia, hey, Mishishi, oh, Mashia, hey, Mishishi, yo. Emmanuel is here. He has many names, 12,000 different names. And he, if you read some of the things, the original scriptures, it talks about the laws of creation, the laws of nature. And there's many points in that book that says exactly that, but for some reason, nobody seems to to understand that they can't see it in there. We've looked at it and we found over 80 passages that says that he, everybody needs to learn these, know these laws of creation. So they're here. And even in the scriptures it says in the year 1,000 times 2, there will be a man that will come and stand and, and talk about these laws. And he will talk about them in small groups. He will not be, have as much power that I have, but he will be a little bit more intelligent. <laughs> so when I was looking at this, I said, hey guys, look at this. Where's that book? Bring that book up here. Where's that book? The symbols book. Now, when I read this and I looked, I said, oh my God, look at this. The universal and spiritual laws of creation. Okay. So I was trying to find in, 
in that book that everybody likes to read every now and then. What are they? But it, I only found one little passage in there that says, Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. Okay, so we dreamed this into being because we were a part of that circle way back 2,000 years. And there was so much energy at that time against the women folk because they're going into a masculine age. The, this man known as Emmanuel had a sister. And she was the one. The Spirit said it was not that man that they that they killed on that cross. It was his sister that the government was after and they killed and murdered. It was Emmanuel's twin sister. So this is why it's important. There's a lot of truths that have been hidden from you. A lot of truths that's been misplaced misguided truth, misinformation to control your soul, control your spirit, your sight, your body, everything that you're about. It's such an, a grand illusion that we decided to experience for some odd reason. So my friend, Steve Red Buffalo, he told me that from his ceremony. He said, a spirit came in. They wanted to know if there was power, this lady wanted to know if there was power in the rosary. And he said, I could share, I could tell you that. She said, no, she said, no, I want to hear it from the spirit. Okay. The spirit said, mm -mm, no power in the rosary. The power is in your heart. It's in your heart right here. Okay, let's take a prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, holy Mary, mother of God. Bless us sinners now for our, and forever in the hour of our death. Amen. Okay, so we have <laughs> this prayer, but it's what it's saying. Holy Mary, okay, descriptive word, mother of God. Hey, She's the mother of God. You know, there's the mother of God in there. What's going on here? I thought God's the guy. But she has a mama. <laughs> it's in the prayer. <laughs> pray for us sinners. I mean, it's all description, but at the end it says, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All it's saying is pray for us sinners. Pray for us sinners. Pray for us sinners. Pray for us sinners. Why can't you pray for yourself? You know, why can't you do something to change your life instead of repeating the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over, not changing your life at all? I want her to change me. You do that. That's, this is your life. This is your body. This is your feet and toes and everything else. Change yourself. That's what you're about. We've been fooled so long, you know? So, we need to listen. We need to listen good. And your heart is the best voice there is within you. So we're gonna share some of the messages that we got from the stone people, from these walls of Moab and other places. My brother, my sister over here, we all went out. The camera crew, we went out and spent time, ceremony, prayed, experienced. And I think, Yolanda, there's a lot of petroglyphs in your backyard. So we need to go back sometimes to, because this is also the future. The messages 
are from the future, for the future, from the future, and also from the past, and also from the present. They're all the same. Now, these messages had brought forth because the part of duality had jumped in in the history and the beginning of how duality was created here. We'll share that with you. It's a big, long story on how Spirit shared with us. So on the third day, we're going to go over some of this information that you see on the wall. So we have so much because at that time, our ancestors listened. There was no noise. You know, seven, eight thousand, fifteen, sixteen thousand years ago, there was no noise. We all had one language. It was our first language. It was the language of light, the language of love. It's right here. This whole world had the same language. Your teachers was everything out here. The trees, the animals, the birds. Everybody had the same language. The rocks, stones, the minerals, the herbs fish, everything was in communication with each other. So we are going to get back to this moment. We have no other alternative because it's your way. The heart is your way. The heart language is your only way for your ascension process, for your enlightenment. That's what creates it, to create what we call unconditional love. So we're getting close. And I remember the fireflies, the lightning bugs, they told us that. They said, at one time, you human beings, you two legs, your light was brighter than ours. In the future, your light will shine again. So I'm saying we're doing okay. If they make a decree like that, we're doing something good. Continue. So we need to work together because that's the only way we could accomplish things. We are a family of light. We're a family of love. Under the laws of attraction, the laws of attraction, you are here, right? That means we all carry the same vibration. Under the laws of light, sound and vibration. So myself, I was told through spirit, I work with the 11th. 12 and 13 dimensions and so do you so if you think you don't get over it get over it so we we're here for a reason that's to share our hearts share our songs share our love share our spirit And there's one thing that today, the deer, as my brother Mazatsi said, today is the day of the deer. The deer people have said, and they talk about the power to be. The power to be. The power is right here. Your power is right here. Never give your power away to no man to no woman, to nobody, to nothing. This belongs to you and 
creation. You give this away, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be lonesome. You're going to be crying. You'll be searching for your heart. You're going to this man, this woman, going places, and sometimes it takes lifetimes to get it back. So hang on to your power. Share your power. Share your heart. But don't give it away. How me talk you, Asi? There's some of the symbols that you've seen on that board. And this one here, I'll, I'll share this with you. This is a, what they call sort of like an optical illusion. This is a woman. Very beautiful woman. This, but this picture is a little bit better. This here, you see the back of her head going around, coming down this way. And you see here, you know, the, the, the nose, mouth, the chin. And what she's doing, uh, she uh, has this, this, this disc. And, and this disc is found, it's a gift to humanity. And what that gift is, is what you've seen in the beginning. See? And they, they, and they tried to, they said that this message says that beware of the false prophets and all that. I mean, travel about a thousand million miles of light years, come over here and say, oh, we're, we're going to tell you guys something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not, they gave a lot of information just to this year. This is part of what we're talking about.
Chief Golden Eagle, who I've known for some time, that walks a good path on this planet, does a lot for his people and all people. And I'd like to have him to say some good words here. He too is here making good medicine for all of us. Uh, Pidama, could I, I have your attention, please? Could I have your attention, please? Could I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? What does it take to honor elders, especially grandmothers? When elders are speaking, you listen. Are you listening out there? Okay, we have to honor our elders. They set a place and examples for us. This grandmother here, she goes out amongst the world, amongst internationally, and sets examples, and as a good representative of Mother Earth, listen to her. She gave her life so that issues of the water, of the fire, of the air, and of Earth will be in full view of what man is doing to the planet. They're abusing the air as we speak. Radiation, chemtrails, ozone. They're standing up and they're talking about this. The grandmothers. Where are our men folk? Stand up. This is the time to do that. Our grandmother here, she's going, she's an elder. She's setting examples. We got to work together. When she talks, listen. We're good, beautiful people. We're a dancing people. We're a singing people. We're a praying people. Live it. Our ancestors are watching us. Our ancestors are listening. She come to honor the water. The water is a beautiful experience of this Mother Earth. Without it, we can't live. You are water. You're 70% water. Honor yourself. You and water are the same. We're all related. And I thank my grandma here for being who she is, for standing up with the rest of the grandmothers on this planet to let us know what we are doing to Mother Earth. And we need to stop. We need to get involved. Because without good air, without good water, without good fire, without the Earth being in its complete uniqueness and perfection, we cannot be complete, unique people. So with, with that, I want to say good afternoon. I, I, I don't mean to be this way, but when spirit talks, spirit talks. So we honor our elders. Grandma, thank you for everything you are from Mother Earth. And I'm happy to be here and stand with you at this time, this moment. This is my grandmother. I'm from South Dakota, but I know a grandmother when I see one. Me talk you, I'll see. Wow. Thank you, Chief Golden Eagle. Well, you know, I could have made this video so much longer, but I've got to cut it at some point. And I hope that you guys enjoyed just some of my favorite memories of being with him. And as we say in Cherokee, Donatakvi, which means until we meet again, because there's no word for goodbye. And I know that he will be all of our guardian angel and that 
he's looking out for us and the telepathy will still be strong for some time. We love you very much, Chief. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us and we will never, ever forget you. And until we meet again. <laughs>